The cost of IT in business can be staggering. From hardware and software expenses to services like internet and phone, you don't need to spend a fortune on IT to succeed. If your organization spends more than $500 monthly on any service, or you're considering signing a long-term contract, IT Enabled can help you manage your technology and minimize your costs. Contact us today to schedule a free consultation. IT Enabled, we're here to help. Hi, I'm Tara Watson Watkins, President and CEO of the Lufkin Angelina County Chamber of Commerce. Welcome to the Connect Podcast, connecting business to the community. I'm here today with my co-host, Blake Polino with BP Media Group. We're super excited to have Susan Robertson, the Executive Director of Habitat for Humanity of Deep East Texas, on the podcast to talk about all of the amazing ways they are helping people in need in our area to get into affordable housing and sharing some really, really cool things that they do. Let's jump into that now. Well, we are thrilled today to have the Executive Director of Habitat for Humanity for Deep East Texas, Susan Robertson. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So we always like to start our podcast by letting the listeners know who you are, give a little bit of background history, and then we'll get into what you do with Habitat. Yeah, you got it. Um, I'm Susan Robertson. I have a um, Bachelor of Arts degree in, um, in English, um, which works really good for a nonprofit world, especially since I write grants all the time. Um, if my mom would have known that, maybe she would have been a little more excited I got that <laughs> English degree. But um, I have worked in nonprofit um, all of my career. I love it. Um, I love helping people. Um, and somehow it has landed me here um, at Habitat, um, which means a lot to me. Um, my family um, actually, um, we didn't own our own home until um, I was probably a teenager. So I understand um, what it means um, to have stability and why it's important um, for children to have a safe home to go home to. That's great. That's great. Awesome. So let's talk about Habitat and what it does for families, for, for anybody that maybe is not familiar with it. Yeah, um, so our main thing is we build safe and affordable homes um, for families in need. Um, we help families who are 30 to 60 percent below the HUD medium income. Um, they also, we have lots of uh, common misconceptions. Um, for example, um, so Tara, um, what do you think? Um, how do they get their home? Do they pay for their house? Is it free? Do they um, have sweat equity? Do you know anything? What I you think, think it's all of the above. All of the above, you're right. Our big common misconception is our houses are free, um, which is um, the direct opposite, which is true. But it's a way, it's a great deal. Um, they get a home for 20 years, 0% interest, um, and it's based on what they can afford. So if a family can only afford a $70,000 home, then that's what they pay for it. Um, they might get a home that's worth 100000 and that other 30000 is completely forgiven. Um, for 10 years, it slowly ticks down by 1 one twentieth until it's completely gone. Okay. Um, we did that probably in the 1990s. The um, Habitat International started that because um, there are some people, um, just like today in the world, who take advantage of certain sure. um, advantages and situations. And back then, um, a lot of people were getting homes, and they were flipping them. Because um, like we said, you get a $70,000 home, and it's worth a hundred. It's a pretty good deal. Yeah. Um, so the purpose is, is that we get the right people in the homes. It's people who are first time homeowners, um, who um, need just a little extra help. And a lot of them fall in this perfect little gap. That's what I like to call it. Most of them don't get any type of assistance from governmental programs, but they also don't make enough that puts them out of that poverty level. So they're stuck in this in-between phase. And sometimes they just need someone to put their hand down there and say, can you just, just grab on? I'm going to teach you how to get yourself all the way out. Yeah. Um, we have a, um, quite a few single moms and mm -hmm. a lot of them, um, there's this big misconception that people who are in poverty don't care or they don't work or they don't try. Yeah. And it's usually the direct opposite, especially those people, like you said, in this gap. Um, most of them work multiple jobs mm -hmm. just to keep their heads above water, to make sure that they have food on the table and electricity and they're doing the best they can. It's like <laughs> it's like the duck sitting on the water, right? If you saw them in public, they look so calm and peaceful. But if you just looked under the water, just their paddling. feet are paddling yeah. so fast because they just want to stay afloat so yeah. bad. Interesting. You know, I, I, I think my first experience, hands-on experience, was uh, back in 2017 with Leadership Lufkin. Yeah. And we were able to come out and to uh, work a couple of hours out at one of the homes you were building. Yep. And the best part was, is that one of uh, the girl that was getting the home was part of our Leadership Lufkin class. Oh, cool. Um, which was so meaningful to all of us to yeah. be able to go and to put some sweat, equi sweat equity into her home. Yeah. 
and to be able to help, you know, sweep out the house because they were getting ready to put up uh, walls. Mm -hmm. And so we needed to, you know, get things cleaner so that they could come in and do that. And, but before we, um, before we did that, we all wrote all over the studs of her home. And it was just, I, I thought that was so special to get to be in a class with someone who was getting that house yes, and to really learn what she and her children were doing to be able to afford this home. And so it was a great hands-on experience, but it was even more than I even imagined that we would be getting. Yes. Um, and a lot of people, um, like you said, you knew her. Yeah. Um, and you probably wouldn't have thought that she would have qualified. Yeah. Um, you don't, you see people all the day, all, all day long that you walk by, you don't realize their situation. You don't know what's going on in their lives. Right. And so um, we're so quick to judge um, that we don't think about what someone else is going through. And yeah. you're right. Like she, um, she now actually has her bachelor's and she will be done with her master's soon. Her kids have um, graduated and um, she has a grandbaby. That's right. A so, precious grandbaby. A precious grandbaby. <laughs> I love her so much. Um, <laughs> I'm laughing because we say once you're in the habitat, Habitat family, you're always in the Habitat family, and that includes your grandbabies because I love them and they smell so sweet. Um, <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Anyway, um, sorry, I got lost track. I do love that baby. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. So how, it's how do people, um, how do you find the people that are you're going to build these homes for? How does that process work? So we open our application once a year, normally in the spring, um, and there's a few quite criteria we go through first um you have to be able to afford a mortgage um, but again that's what on your scale level of what you can afford um you have to have worked for two years show positive job history that you can keep a steady job um we also do um need so we do something home visits is what we call them we have a um, committee on our board who's family selection and they get a rubric and they go to all the houses after i weed them out so i weed them out based on financial criteria home size um you know just basic stuff so when they go do the home visit it's about um, a checklist it's about 40 different items long and it has common things that you would think of is there electricity running water is this house size enough square footage big enough for um, the amount of people and um, if you have two kids who are really close in age and they're opposite genders by HUD standards they have to be in two separate rooms um, there's little things like that that you don't think of where it's common stuff as well like um, like we said running water um, I like to tell people if you drew a um, one mile radius circle around where you are right now and if you do nothing but um, touch those people you'll make a huge difference because right here within one mile of where you are there's poverty mm -hmm. and people don't realize what level of poverty it is because it's out of sight and it's out of mind mm -hmm. so it's not real but the truth is from one mile from where we are sitting right now i have been in multiple homes that are should be torn down yeah um, with no electricity um, some I've been on one where they couldn't turn on a light switch because that one always electrocuted them, but they had to turn it on. So we weren't even allowed to turn it on. The sweet lady turned the light on for us because she didn't want us to be electrocuted. Wow. Um, I've been in homes where there's holes in the floor that I can see the dirt yeah. um, on the ground. Um, electricity only in one room that's ran by extension cords. Um, people who don't have hot water who only have one outlet, so they heat up water on a stove to cook and clean and. Um, do everything they need to do with every day yeah. and that's right here at the chamber in a one mile radius um, and they live in your county and you you just don't even think about it not yeah. that overseas missions isn't great uh, habitat we are an affiliate of habitat international so we actually tithe to habitat and we build homes overseas um, which i think is great work um, but if you want to make a real impact right here in your county like i said just draw a one mile circle from where you are and you can touch somebody's life that's really interesting. Yeah. I love that. So tell me about the homes that you build. How big are they? How small are they? How yeah. many rooms can you have? Things like that. We do safe and affordable homes. That's what we say. Um, so all of our homes are brand new. I tell people that I like to build a home that I want to live in. Um, when I first started, um, which was about five or six years ago, um, I there was this mentality around habitat that it was good enough for who it's for. Mm -hmm. um, and that makes me so mad. <laughs> Um, this is their first home, um, and they are people just like we are, and there is no good enough for yeah, who it's for. They have for. dreams. Just they like have everybody. dreams. Oh, it gives me chill bumps. It makes me nauseous. It gets me so mad and fired up. Um, their homes are 
safe and affordable, not lavish. Um, they're normally three bedroom, two bath. They're around 1,200 square feet. We do alter that based on their family size. We have built, um, the biggest house we've built is a five bedroom, two and a half bath, and it was close to 1,400 square feet. So you can see they are very compact and um, we make use of every space possible. My construction director hates hallways. So a lot of her houses, he tries to eliminate hallways as much as possible just so we can um, really maximize the space that's there. And um, we partner with lots of great different contractors in town. Used to Habitat was completely volunteer. You could come out and you could you could lay wire for electricity, you could hammer a nail, um, and obviously now times have changed and there's lots of protocols and um, code enforcement. So we use lots of contractors for what we do um, for electrical and plumbing, um, now even for framing and roofing because that can be dangerous, up on ladders and um, heavy equipment, everything that you use. It is a job site. People don't, I think we take that for granted because y'all come out and you see Jimmy Carter and he's out there hammering a nail and um, which is great back in the 80s, but <laughs> now <laughs> things have changed and safety is our first priority. So um, you come out, like you said, Tara, and you build, um, you can do stuff alongside the partner families. They put in sweat equity, that's what we call it, mm -hmm. since their house is a at a lower rate. Um, they have to put some, get some stake in the game is what we like to talk it call it so um, they actually put in hours on their home whether that is hammering that nail painting something um, filling out paperwork um, we do a little bit of everything they write thank you cards um, that's probably one of my favorite things um, because the whole family can do that even if they have kids um, near the end they get a list of everyone who's contributed to their house in some way regardless if that's leadership Lufkin who came out or if it's VP Granite who donated the granite for their countertops and them and their children sit down and they write letters and thank you cards to each one of those um, donors and every time I get the best response from the parents who say their kids love it because they didn't realize how many people um, it took to build their home. Mm -hmm. That's, That's a big neat. deal. That's awesome. That's neat. Yeah. So how many of these are you doing a year? Um, so right now, on average, we build um, four to six a year. Four and to six we, years um, our plan is to keep that up. So. That's awesome. That's yeah. great. Excited. So what else is new for the future of Habitat? Well, um, we recently took over Nacogdoches County, um, okay. which is why we're now Habitat of Deep East Texas. Um, so we are still, we are actually just broke ground on uh, four homes here in Angelina County. Um, and we are in the process of looking for land in Nacogdoches okay. um, because we want to go ahead and start strong over there. And our goal the next two years is to still build um, four to six homes here in Angeline County and try to start building at least two homes a year in Nacogdoches. Um, but I think our big thing is um, we've always had um, little pieces of land here and there. We build one or two homes at a time, um, but we were um, had the opportunity to partner with Dimmon Avenue Baptist Church, and they've been gracious us enough to donate land to us that's right behind the church that we are able to build a um, an entire little subdivision, a one-street oh, nice. cul-de-sac. Yes, I'm so excited. We'll have Tim Holmes. Um, it's in the last stage at City Council. Voting um, is going on this month, um, and if it passes, our um, name will be Dimmon Heights after Dimmon Avenue Baptist Church in Heights. That was our office manager because we take our families to New Heights uh, when they join us. And then the road will be named Butler Court. Um, we actually had a family who was approved um, right before COVID. Um, she got COVID that, that fall and um, she went to the hospital and in two weeks they realized that she had um, lung cancer and she didn't mm. know it and she passed away. Mm. Um, and Sorry. their last name, um, were they were the Butlers and we really wanted to do something to honor them and her kids um, because she probably would have been one of the first ones in our, um, in our neighborhood. So mm. we're excited. Um, it's memorable and sweet and bittersweet, um, but I know that it's something that I think is really important to us and to her family. That's so kind. Yeah. That's so, so kind. How, how can people help if they want to be involved yeah. with Habitat for Humanity? How can they get involved? So um, we do, uh, we, we want you to come out and volunteer, come paint, come do yard work with us, come clean. Um, after the guys come out and wreck shop with all their construction <laughs> stuff because they do. They make a mess. They yeah. do. Yeah. They leave like all their drink cans, everything. Anyway, uh, so yeah, come out. You can volunteer. Um, we um, we always take donations. Um, we take goods. We don't just take monetary donations. Um, whatever you give us, if we can't use on the homes, then we try to sell at a warehouse sale, and we use that money to put back in the program. Um, you know, 
to build homes. Um, finally, we do fundraisers. Our next big fundraiser coming up is the Habitat Golf Tournament. Um, since we are a family organization, um, we're doing a two-port golf tournament. We do one Sunday night. It is Tees for Keys, adult junior, with a parent and a child can come out and play. And then that Sunday, we're doing a um, four-man scramble. That's great. And when yeah. is that? That is April 30th. Thank you. I was like, oh, yeah. okay. Days. So it'll be after the show. <laughs> it'll be after the <laughs> yeah. okay. April 30th and May 1st. Okay. Yep. Well, the work that you're doing for Angelina County and now Nacogdoches, we're all very blessed to have Habitat Thank you. for Humanity and to have your compassion. Uh, that's very obvious Thanks. when you talk about the family. So thank you for what you do. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. We appreciate you. And uh, where can people find you if they want to learn more about these yeah, resources? Yeah, you can go to angelinahabitat.org or you can find us on Facebook. And we are still Habitat for Humanity of Angelina County. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time. Appreciate you Thanks. coming on the show and sharing all this thank with us. You. And Thank you so much for listening to the show again this week. We truly appreciate your support. If you'll do us a huge favor, if you will go rate and review the podcast, give us five stars wherever you're listening. It helps other people in our area find podcasts just like this when they're searching for new things to listen to. Thank you so much, and we will see you next week.